what happened tie game and we are back for another live episode of the kingdom we'd like to welcome our viewers from across this beautiful country of canada uh from manitoba saskatchewan bc alberta maybe ontario i'm not sure about new brunswick but definitely newfoundland our inside source out in newfoundland hope they're doing well and uh i guess we'll see you in about 30 seconds i would say if i can find this fucking thing <laughs> jesus What is up? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the kingdom. My name is Drums, and as per usual, I am joined by the brothers behind King Golf, Regan and Jordan Headley. And as we usually do, we're going to send it up north to our boy Reg, see what's going on up there. What's happening, buddy? How much, man? How's uh, it back? I was watched, uh, not, not great. Found a uh, guy in Dolphin today, though. I want to hear Reg here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> got, got him on right now, Ken. Uh, no, things are things are okay. I found a guy finally today to uh, help kind of uh, fix it instead of just a temporary fix, like fix it long term. So went there today. It's kind of like uh, deep tissue massaging. So that it was pretty wild. Happy endings or no? No, it's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Kind of weird. Uh, I got the Jays game split right now. They were up 3 nothing comfortably, and then all of a sudden, not so I much. took it off the TV and brought it in here, and yeah, it's not, not looking good right now, but it's 3-3 now. Currently under video review, but no, got the Ironman coming up next weekend. I don't know if I'll be golfing. I hope to be, but exciting otherwise. Better um, the growth. Yeah, you better take all the drugs that you can to get, uh, get ready for that journey. Like what kind? Oh, just all of them. Everything on the table. What kind of drugs then? <laughs> Jor, what's going on in Rossman, buddy? Top of the evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in the chat. Not sure who's out there, but if you're uh, there, say hello. Uh, Ken, where are you going for a golf trip? And Rigo, did you get those get you ready? Yeah. Holy cow. I got them a couple days ago. I'm on the second pair already. That's quick shipping. Mm-hmm. How awesome is fresh gitch? Oh. How about fresh gitch out of the dryer? Yeah. Like a, both, like a brand new pair. Both both tough to beat, but fresh, fresh is unreal. Yeah. Uh, we got Kenny in the chat. We got Chaz. Kenny uh, was a champion at the Scottswood Scramble on the weekend or whenever it was. Uh, him, Smitty, um, Tanner, Shitty. and Shitty. All the boys were looking pretty good. Uh, Ken looks. Ken's face looked like he had no doubt in his mind that they were going to win that day. If you look at the picture, um, he but, he proclaimed they're a dynasty. Yep. In the I mean, uh, caption, did we did we win that tournament one year? Were you there? Was I? Yeah. No, the year that I was there, somebody shot like twenty two under. Okay. Terry Riley actually. Really? Yeah. Scottswood's a sick horse. No, Man. sorry. I'm talking about Carmen. I, I've never been to school. Oh, yeah, that's we're, That's right. It was Carmen. Um, but, yeah, in Rossman, things are good. The leaves are changing. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Got a lot of trees on the property here, so it's going to be uh, – I've been kind of taking a picture off the deck every day, and I want to kind of put together a little um, flip book of colors changing from green to gone, but – Luckily, there's not a whole lot of leaves in the yard, which is good because I hate cleaning up leaves. I like that video with the uh, night ball, the glow ball. Pretty cool, hey? Yeah. Did, so it, what they, did it appear like magic or did you believe it to be true? I got a feeling it wasn't just what you. Do you mean? Well, yeah, you need a couple, um, couple hands on deck there to get that video filmed. And that's exactly what happened. Magic. 
Yeah, bridge was on uh, on the highway. I kind of figured that's where it would be approximately. It landed just in the ditch right before the highway when she was there. Um, but it was pretty funny because, I mean, it was at night, so we could basically just talk to each other from where we were. It was kind of like a, a little bit of a yell, but you could hear. I mean, it's at the lake, so you can kind of hear everything. So Yeah. How far, how far was that? Uh, was I don't know. Like? I, I kind of wanted to just see how far the balls were going. What did you uh, hit, though? That was a four iron, so it's probably minus, too heavy. Yeah. So my thought was minus, that you must be hitting them over the road normally. Like the normal balls. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Right? Because it, it probably took – like it probably takes 15 yards at least off like those balls. Yeah. Tough to say for sure. I'd like oh. to – maybe we'll do that in the, in the daylight sometime just to see how far it goes with an actual ball, but – I usually just hit a five or six in the morning, especially now because it's uh, cold and it's hard hitting the low irons. And when it's cold, what are you going to do if you ding a golfer while they're golfing? Uh, I don't think it would ever go that far unless I just nodded it. But I mean, it's usually at like seven in the morning and I don't think there's a whole lot of golfers out there. So anyways, it's, it's been pretty fun, though, because uh, it's been at sunrise every morning. So I've been getting up a little before then, getting a little stretch in, get moving. And then that's kind of how the day starts. So it's just a. Kind of a cool routine that I've found myself getting into. But will you do in the winter? I don't know. I was thinking about that the other day. I don't know if it's possible or not, but I, I, I was planning out a video today with uh, a driver. So stay tuned for that. What if you catch one thin in the winter time? <laughs> can you head out of your, you could hit them out of your garage. Uh, at no. At least you're it'd not be, out the it'd, cold. It'd go to the property next to me. The garage facing property is like only like, 200 yards and then it's somebody else's so oh that's where the bear outfitters are out down the road oh yeah yeah um but yeah i guess i could probably just cut a hole in my garage and and shoot that way thought about probably, it but probably the best option <laughs> not for that specific reason but i've thought about it uh putting a hot tub there but it seems like a lot of work so anyways drums how's how's uh your life buddy do you recover from schmertz's wedding yet good yeah shout out to uh Mertz and claire they had a a little shindig for their wedding uh, up at Mississippi, so that was uh, a good Saturday evening for the boys. Uh, yeah, recovered pretty well. I didn't actually get that shit faced. I was gonna drive home just cause, and then whatever. Yeah, you were kind of in the between phase, hey? But I was in a tweener. You got yeah. going pretty good by the end, and then I, I feel like because that bus ride took so long to get back to the place, everybody crashed. But I, I feel like if it was like a quick bus ride. It would have been a really late night at the place. Yeah. Yeah. Like you have an hour long bus ride and everybody's like toast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, we're uh, starting to bunker down for the winter here, starting to catch up on some of my shows. So uh, I've got a whole bunch to catch up on from the summer. So uh, I'm making my way through them here. Speaking of that, we watched uh, The Girlfriend That Never Existed. So we'll get into that a little bit later as part of the Kingdom Book Club. Or a video club, I guess you'd say, for the winter is something that we're working on uh, to keep the us busy and to keep the people uh, who watch the show busy throughout the winter because uh, there's not a whole lot of golf happening in Manitoba. So and we want some interaction with it too. Like anybody in the chat that has watched this stuff or you're going to watch along with us, let's see everybody's thoughts on this stuff. This one was wild, but I didn't we'll actually get around to watching it. Yeah, you did. <laughs> um, but we have a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. We got the President's Cup starting tomorrow. We got all the pairings that were released. Um, I have like three or four random questions to ask and just see what people uh, in the chat think to see if I'm a if I'm on to something or if I'm a cl complete idiot or what's going on. But um, anyways, do we have any housekeeping, Rigo? No? Not really. Oh, yeah, I guess a little bit. Uh, Holmes win on the weekend. Uh, I mean... Danny Willett, Jesus, like, are we serious here? Hard to believe Willett's Danny still Willett. just hanging around. I thought he was a one-hit wonder. Just, I, just keeps playing off that uh, Masters win, right? Yeah. Um, What's I'm, this schedule? I, I'm guessing that he didn't uh, get an offer from Liv because he seems like one of those guys who would probably go to Liv. So maybe they didn't <laughs> offer him anything. So he's he's hanging around the PGA now, but. He seems um, like he's got a lot of gambling debts. One of yeah, those it's too bad though that he. I like, mean, that's that's just that's, gut wrench. Yeah, Even just watch. Sure. You know, not being a fan of him, it's just like wow. But you got to get the ball in the hole, man. Like, I, it's crazy. I, Did I you see what Homa? 
how much that it would take for him to go to live? No. He was like, yeah, $2 billion up there. Two bill? Two billion? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I never really disliked or liked Willett. And I think everybody's kind of the same way. Everybody's happy to see him win, I think, the time that he won. But then his brother just got all super weird. Was that at the Ryder Cup or President's Cup or something? His brother was hammered and chirping other British, players or something? British shit? Open, I think. British Open? Pretty sure. I think Wasn't that just kind of left a sour uh, taste in everybody's mouth. And really nothing to do with him, which is kind of unfortunate. But I think he was hammered, wasn't he? Yeah. Wasn't he broke? tweeting out? Is yeah, that I think so. I, I don't really remember. Something like that. Yeah. Speaking of tweeting out. Someone in the chat. off 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 uh, topic here, but Brandel Chambly is going bonkers on Twitter. Why? <laughs> I just stopped following him a while ago. No, I, I, I always just see things that he tweeted. and uh, Like about yeah. Liv or what? Yeah. Like, uh, I forget who he was chirping the other day, but he went off. Like, like he goes, like, for the juggler when he you says stuff, are... like, like people gotta like just get sick of talking about it. No, I, like, yeah, I know we're I sick of talking so. about it, but like, hold are we right? Doesn't see him. Uh, uh, what a schedule for Ken there. I was thinking that was bully pulpit, but that appears to be in Ontario. So, uh, Brad's which one's his? Brad name? Young, Soggy, Golf Pro. Soggy and Shores. Yeah, and that looks like a, not a bad time. Jay's oh, Yanks, too. Dang. The Jays can pull one out tonight. That would be well. It's going to be a massive series either way. But Trev's in the chat. Good to see you, buddy. What's uh, what's the occasion, Keebs? Is it somebody's stagger or is it just the boys' rip up? I agree. There, uh, Barrett. Uh, I don't really like him, Barrett. I got to get you that freaking quarter zip, man. I don't know how to get it to you, but we'll figure it out a way. Me and him have been going back and forth for like a month trying to get this quarter zip to him and an undershirt. So it's a little different living out here than it is, uh, a little more less convenient, but there's goods and bad for sure. I keep freezing here, eh? Yeah. I keep uh, Mr. Freezing. What was Mr. Freezing's name in Dolphin? Dale. 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 I keep Dale freezing here. Just failed me in chemistry. Really? Yeah. I even passed chemistry. Um, so last year, last April, uh, Lee Westwood tweeted, golf's not a closed shop, though, is it, Davey? This L SL lot one guarantees no relegation. That's not sport. He was talking about soccer. So then Brandel Chambly said, Lee, it's been quite sad to watch you and your fellow live puppets spit out a Farago of Insane investment gotcha points while being paid to forget the stances you once took. Here, you raging against the very concept in soccer you're now paid to pretend is legitimate in golf. And it's so he quote, went back, it's he quote went tweet. back, yeah, he went back and quote tweeted, yeah. No, he just posted a screenshot of it and then put that, Yo, I grow. yeah, grow up, grow up, Peter Pan. Count Chocula. Uh, okay, so back to uh, Mertz's wedding there. We stayed at a, a Airbnb, I guess you'd call it, called Cowboys and Camo. It was a ranch. It was actually sick. Uh, a little far, a little out of the ways, but um, it was it was unreal. It was on a huge piece of property in the valley there. Uh, what would it be, west of Inglis, Rio, or west of Mississippi? Northwest? West, yeah. Yeah. Um, so kind anyway. of right on the Saskatchewan border. Yeah. A um, couple things happened there, but one thing was there was two sets of bunk beds there, uh, and I was on the top bunk. Um, and so I've slept on bunk beds before, and top bunk is okay, but um, bottom bunk's better probably. But you have that fear of like, is the top bunk going to give in, right? I, I had, had a, I've had that feeling before. I don't know. If I had it like a three foot gap between the mattress and the wall. <laughs> Like that's oh, as far over as it can go. Yeah. So I was literally balancing all night. <laughs> so anyways, I was thinking how many people have died in bunk beds on the bottom bunk before, like from the top bunk collapsing. <laughs> Turns out it's extremely rare, but there's approximately 36,000 bunk bed related injuries per year in the USA. 
So I don't know if that's like the top bunk actually collapsing or if that's just like kids falling off the top bunk, but or if it's Dale and Brendan. <laughs> so that was one thing I wanted to talk about. It is kind of it's pretty scary uh being bottom bunk, but definitely more comfortable. Because it feels like you're just trapped up there in the, on the top bunk. You don't want to move because you're gonna wake everybody up. And like, I don't know, it takes a it takes a lot of commitment to like get up and whiz. So would you, would you rather top or bottom? Right? What's that? So you'd rather top or bottom? <laughs> that sounds funny. It's a it's a toss up. <laughs> you rather top or bottom? You I, really have no, I have no preference. They're both uh, equal amount of pros and cons. I Gun to my head, I'd probably take top bunk just so I didn't die. But you know what? Didn't you, you guys have up? bunk bed growing up? Yeah. yeah. I was always peeing the bed from the top. That's probably why I was so <laughs> just raining on them. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I to tell you the truth, I've never actually thought about that on the bottom bunk. Now, no, no, every time I'm ever going to get to the bottom bunk, I'm like, Damn, am I going to get killed? Tonight? Wow, Fuck you guys must days. be on some sturdy bunk beds. No, I just, um, I don't know. Second question I wanted to ask you guys and the, the folks in the chat. Um, when you guys are getting gas, do you lock your doors? No. Depends what's in my car. Like never drums? No. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm the same way. If there's like cash in my car or something, I usually do. But I find it super awkward to like get out of your car and like lock the door because the gas yeah. trap is like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this guy doesn't trust me at all. <laughs> like I'm literally going 20 feet away and I have to feel like the need to lock my uh, my doors. Right? Like he looks like a douchebag. Yeah, but... for sure it is for sure if you're hammered you don't want to be on the top bunk spinning around up there do you take your keys out of the car yeah uh i don't know like i usually just I fly by the seat of my pants there's no no real rhyme or reason but like i don't usually lock the doors but the other day is just kind of like a habit almost you know you get you get out of your car shut the door and i have like that little lock thing on my door handle so i just press that yeah. by accident and I was like, oh, man, this is awkward because it makes a little noise. And then, you know, beep, beep. <laughs> See, yeah. I think that's OK. But then if you uh, like if you forget to do it sometimes and there's like a bunch of people around and you actually have to like press the button to lock it and it makes like the horn. You're like, oh, boy, <laughs> it's awkward. Keeps is a strong uh, mm -hmm. against it. I mean, I, I don't usually lock it, but I, I just wanted to ask you guys because I accidentally did like by habit the other day and it was super awkward so i pretty much do almost every time i would say self-serve yeah. guy eh? i'm i'm not i if, if it's self-serve or or they serve me i'm taking uh we serve every time yeah but that's city uh that's city living i don't think there's many like jump to the pumps in the city like we serve yeah yeah i think you're right actually like even in brandon like there honestly isn't many like, I just go to co-op all the time because that's the only place that I know for sure. To... Do you think co-op will always have we serve or are they going to lose that soon? I hope they'll lose me as a customer if they do. Yeah. It's kind of all the co I shouldn't say all the co-op has going for them, but, like, it's a it's the reason I go there. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. But, but during uh, the pandemic there or whatever it was, uh, I, I just – I would just use self-serve so I didn't have to uh, put a mask on and go inside. Yeah, TJ's right for sure. Uh, small town life, I guess that's what it is. I mean, like in the city, there's not a whole lot of people offering uh, pump pump your gas. So anyways, last question here, then I'll, I'll move on to golf. But I was getting groceries at Sobeys the other day and uh, – the the what do you call them the clerk grocery clerk you put you you pull up there you start unloading your groceries and then you cashier. like the cashier yeah so then then they start ringing your stuff through and you're like trying to um bag your own groceries and they ask you for your air miles like they ask for do you have air miles like why do they have to ask that two minutes before you're ready to pay? Is it just like an awkward kind of like uh, 
they don't really know what to say there. So they just like say words. Cause like, I'm not going to pull out my air miles card when I'm trying to load my fucking groceries here. Like wait till I'm paying when I have my wallet out. You know what I mean? Or is that just, does that not happen? I think it's probably just like a courtesy to you to say, Hey, we take air miles. If you have it, when you're ready, I don't think she's like, get your fucking card out right this second. Idiot. <laughs> you got 10 seconds. You're not collecting your miles. Yeah, you can't collect them. If you take too long bagging your groceries. I don't know. Just like, but why not wait till I'm have my wallet out and pay? I don't know. So I'm I don't know. I've never actually had it like premature. I don't know. No. Wow. Man, it seems like nine Ooh. out of ten times they ask me for my air miles. Do you have air miles? As soon as I like pull up there, like no, just wait, just hang on here. Co-op doesn't uh, doesn't ask for that, so I, I can't really relate to anything in regards to that. Also, Co-op's air miles are absolute right? junk program, man. I've been collecting air miles for like fifteen years, and I've got like two dozen Pro V ones out of it. <laughs> I've never got anything. <laughs> I check my air muzzle. I'm like, I gotta have something by now. And like, you look at it, and it's like, what? I got like enough to buy like a a baseball hat. Like, where else accepts it other than like the liquor store and so? Safeway. Yeah, Safeway does, but Safeway is essentially Sobeys. Yeah. Yeah, nowhere else though. Um, Ken, you don't bag your own groceries. Yeah, where are you going? (laughs) <laughs> serious issue. I wouldn't say it's a serious issue, just uh something I wanted to bring up, you know. I I uh I don't beg my own either. They beg them here. That's cool. Really? Uh co-op bags it too as well, but Sobeys you have to beg your own. I don't know when that started either. Matt, the amount of um reusable cloth bags that I bought and never brought one back to the store ever in my life is insane. I like to know my tally. Well, man, I don't go into the grocery store without one of those bags. I'm not paying like 25 cents for a fucking paper bag to. <laughs> I always out. forget, and then I'm like, oh, well, what are you going to do? And then I, I buy all tell those reusable list. ones again. <laughs> Same thing. Whoa. We have a shitload of them, and I always tell Liz, just put some in the car so you don't forget. Yeah, sure that's shit. what I do. Today, today that happened. There you go. I didn't have any bags. We got lots of uh, air miles in news. We might as well be the air miles. Uh... We have air miles pod. We're the air miles, miles a pod. Air miles is a joke. I'll say it. We've said it. We weren't Stop trying to get golf. them as a sponsor, anyways. What's that? We weren't trying to get them as a sponsor. No, anyways. air miles wouldn't sponsor us. No, it's dead technology. Yeah. <laughs> if if Would Safeway doesn't. Even? If Safeway doesn't want them, we don't want them. That's that's as much as I know. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. trap at Safeway, but I, I think they have they have yeah. good interest in mind. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to golf. <laughs> How about uh Canada golf is buzzing? We've been talking about this obviously for a while. Being a small town Manitoba, Canada golf show, we've been pretty impressed with the amount of uh representation on the PJ and the LPJ and the Euro Tour, of course, our buddy. Uh, Aaron Cockrell there. He's but, off first thing tomorrow, first group. Cockrell? 750 in Paris. In, in Paris? France. Yeah. They got some sick courses there actually in France, which you wouldn't really expect. This one's at Le Golf National. Yeah, that's that's where uh, I was going to go play when I was in uh, – because the Ryder Cup was there, I think, one year. I think so. I think right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was going to go like, but you have to drive a little ways out of the city, obviously, to see some golf because Paris is just a chit show. But, um, you hated it, eh? I did not like Paris and I will never go back there. It was, just, I don't know, it was really dirty. The people were really rude. Um, the the tower of whatever it's called, Pisa Eiffel Tower. Um, <laughs> I hate heights too, so it's just like a nightmare for me. You, you go all the way up there, man. It's so high, and you're in just like this cage, basically. You can see out the whole time, and it just seemed, like it was built a hundred years or whenever it was, but it felt like that elevator up is like a thousand years old, man. And if if you free fall from that thing, holy, <laughs> like top bunk in the Eiffel Tower is a little bit different heights here, but doesn't it stink? That's what Bryce just said. It smells like oh, pissing. Yeah. It does. He's right. It sucks, man. You, if you like are walking down the street or you're 
you take one step where you shouldn't be taking a step, there's like 50 people that honk their horn at you. And Bryce, is it because they have just like a shitty, like super old school sewer system? Is that what it is? That's part of it. And the water runs through the city. But um, and also we just got back from Ireland as well. And Ireland's like the complete opposite of that. Like you can kind of do whatever you want there. Super chill, really nice people. Um, although Dublin, they're hammered. what's that? Because they're hammered. Because they're hammered all the time. French people are just like meanies. <laughs> okay. Anyways, you said the representation in uh, in Canadian golf on the PGA Euro Tour uh, LPGA. Yeah. So uh, Connors is playing with uh, Sonny tomorrow. Yeah. Against JT and uh, well, what are the matches drums? Because there's some good ones. Both Canadian boys are out first thing tomorrow morning. Uh, so first off, we got to do oh, 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 oh. Uh, Patrick Cantley, <laughs> Xander Shoffley versus Adam Scott Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, then we got Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas versus Sonny and Connors. Uh, Cam Young and Colin Morikawa versus Tom Kim and KH Lee. Uh, then we got Scotty Scheffler, Sam Burns versus C. Woo. C. Woo. Shaking that ass. Shaking that ass. Big What's Tone that? and Max versus Taylor Pendrith and Mito Pereira. That's going to be a sick match, actually. They're the last one, too. Jill Armel. Yeah. Homa and Finau, right? Big Tone, yeah. Yeah, that'll be a sick match, man. Just okay, sitting out for the internationals is Christian. How, this is gonna ruin me. Bezedna. Or... Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. This is ruin me. Like your career, your podcast career. Yeah, yeah that's it. You're done now. We might actually can you after that. We'll have to have a chat after the epi, but that might be it. <laughs> What's with it's the cool. Americans always picking the same like two groups, like Cantley and Shoffley and Well, because they got Thomas. Well, like we do that, I guess. Check their track record, baby. If they got good chem, then let's roll, baby. I'm rooting hard for the internationals, man. I love okay, that. Did, did you guys see this um, suggestion of integrating the yes. LPGA? Yeah. Yeah. Who was that, Rigo? He followed us today. Yeah, I don't know, but he flagstick. Yeah. Is oh, he part no. of flagstick? That guy? I believe so. <clears throat> Holy, we've had a lot of shit going on today in here. <laughs> As Rob would say, humble brag. But yeah, so a, essentially what he was saying was at what, um, what is there, 12, 12 per team? So essentially it's six six guys, six girls um, representing each and then just integrating in between the like I guess you would have some mixed matches as, as well. Cool idea, that would... but like do do it like make a new event. I think like you can't just start screwing with these things. I don't think. I don't know because you're losing so many good international players to live that the roster doesn't really stand up to the U.S. on paper, anyways. Like anything it never really in a did. golf match. It no, that's does. true. But it's even worse now. Yeah. The whole thing is just weird. What they so you got America that gets to play in both the President's Cup and Ryder Cup every year, but right. then like the Euros can't play in this one, and these guys can't play in the Ryder Cup. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Why? 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 His argument was too that the the international women would have the upper hand on the American on the American women. Right. It would Which be kind of cool to see that actually, that but like, yeah. I don't know that you just add it to the President's Cup. Like, make a new event. I don't know. I think they'll have to see like how this progresses with out the live guys. They they need to do the USA versus the world. What's the USA so scared of? They can't take on everybody. Uh, I think they did previously. Uh, it was called World War One and Two. George disappears. He got kicked off for that comment. 
<laughs> Streamyard must be an American-owned company. <laughs> Biden <laughs> said, "See ya." <laughs> gets gets booted. That's phenomenal. But I think that uh, I forget which American it was that said, like, some of those international players. I think like six of them have won in the last like six months. And he's like, "If you're playing good golf, you're playing good golf." Like. Just because it looks like that on paper. I mean, those guys are hot. Which? The internationals. Like some of the lesser known names, I guess. Yeah, but they're winning. They're not like, like the not like the big names. Tom. And Moore. yeah, Dickie's right too. I guess more uh more Euros on the live than actual how they deem international. Welcome back, Jor. Thanks, boys. I didn't want to get involved. I, I didn't want to get kicked by uh, Biden too. <laughs> is that what happened there? <laughs> is Sleepy is Joe? Stream, you think he's kicking me out of a chat? Good luck. Came form together. Yard, ends. His stream yard owned by a US. Yes, he, that's why he got kicked. Look at Reggie using technology. <laughs> I, did, I didn't even. So um, not too many international players. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of Euros for sure. Uh, woman, woman, what did I say? Hey, where are we at here? Where are we at here? Sorry, boys. I don't know what happened here, but it seems like once at per episode, I get kicked out of here. So, anything else we got to touch on for the President's Cup? You guys got predictions? Uh, they're gonna get smoked or they got a chance? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. if I was betting, I would still bet international. Well, let's bet. We haven't done a bet on here forever, man. What are we doing? What are we even doing? Okay, Reg, put a bet in. Uh, I I don't I don't have any any money. Actually, I do have money on here. Want to bet tonight? No, I mean oh. bet on the podcast, like between oh. us. Oh. Hey, I'm just trying to see here. Is Tom on the team? Yeah, Tom Kim. Yeah. Yeah. Who's he got tomorrow? Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> Tom. Uh... Tom is against Colin and Cam. You know. Is that what Thomas a, the train engine? Yeah. What a pimp <laughs> post he had, man. Holy. <laughs> Look at this guy. Oh. Yeah. Did you see uh, the Team International? Oh, yeah, Tommy. <laughs> Did you see the Team International's um, Instagram story today where they had all the wives of the international team? No. Check it out. It's pretty entertaining, actually. Corey Connor's wife looks like a boss man like she just flies out of there cracks the curtains like that everybody else is just kind of chill she just whips them open like that it's pretty sweet i tried finding it on here but i think it's just on the instas um she's a good follow on twitter too isn't she oh no that's that's hadwin's wife right yeah camilo's wife what's hadwin been up to anyways See, we got we got she got what? Was he injured for a while? I don't know. He went through a swing change, then came back pretty hot, but I don't think he got quite hot enough to make the team. Um, I, I think that what? We have breaking news in regards to um, what, what are these guys called? Internationals? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they're even on Twitter. President's Cup. Um, we got breaking news in regards to our contest. Hey, yeah, I would say, but yeah, but what should we announce? No, I no, I, I guess we can now. Where are we done with the president's cup? No, I was just kind of uh killing time here before I could find this. Hmm. So, okay, well, we'll save that till after we talk about this. But uh, <laughs> so who are you guys taking then? What I was okay, going to well, say is, like, the Americans all know each other. And it's like, okay, sick. It's the same team over and over again because they play the Ryder Cup and then they play this. I think it'd be sick to be on the international team because it's like you get to know guys from, like, all over the world, right? Right. Not just all your buddies from the States. Like, I, 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 up just with. looking at those pictures, like, just Tom there hanging out with, uh, like, Connors and Pendrith, like, that's pretty sick, actually. No? Yeah, and, like, the I'm Americans have literally, like, been around the same tournaments their entire life. Right. That's a huge advantage for them, too. For the Americans? 
Well, yeah, because they all speak yeah. the same language. They all know mm-hmm. each other. Like these guys have to. I mean, I think the captains do a pretty good job of putting guys together who know each other, similar to like the Ryder Cups and stuff that we do. Like we put guys usually together that, who like each other. Um, but still, like if you have twelve guys who all speak the same language, you can kind of mix them up based on how they're playing and stuff. With uh, with the internationals, you have you're a little bit more handcuffed, I think. Um, cause if guys are playing well, some guys aren't playing well, you kind of have to mix and match guys together. And I feel like it would be hard to play with some of those guys if they don't speak English and you're trying to like, you know, gel with them and, and ask some questions and get lines and, and uh, or reads from them and shit like that. So I feel like that's a pretty big advantage to the U S other than being better on paper. They got that going for them too. Mm-hmm. So something overall uh, experience. I think I'd rather be on team international though. Yeah. Yeah. They got. They actually got good branding to it. it reminds me of a certain local <laughs> golf company, but not the one today. Did you guys the see yellow? the picture of Adam Scott? That, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and he's got nice. he's got a McFlurry in his hand. <laughs> What's with that? I don't know. What's? Did you guys see that picture I cropped of uh, Steve Irwin's face on his outfit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't get much love, but well, it didn't even look like Steve Irwin though. I took a look at it a couple times before I could figure out who the hell it was. I don't know how else. Yeah, uh, I can't. I don't see the wives on here anymore. But worth I, worth checking out. It's there. I found it on Twitter. No, on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. It's just well, on the story. It. Well, did you not say it was on the Instagram story? Yeah, but I don't know. Can you look at Instagram on the internet? I don't know. This is my first time. This is actually my first day. I just got the internet. Are you trying to share it? Welcome to internet. No, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to share it on here. Okay, I'll yeah, share it. On, gotta... I'll share it on the Twitter later. Don't worry about it anymore. Okay, who who are you guys taking? I think we're all unanimous. U.S. Are you? Yeah. Oh. You're taking U.S. Yeah. In a shit kick or a tight? Um, I mean, what's the scoring breakdown? I'll say they win by f- three points. Interesting comment here from Jay. Kind of wild that the course is just rewrote like that. So the the purpose of that is to get fourteen and fifteen more, or uh, no way, and 18 more on because I guess matches would be ending early or something. And probably their feature holes are seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, that's yeah, right. that's what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. wow. This is a dumb question. I'm going to sound like an idiot, but what? Where is it? Where's the yeah. tournament? Yeah, I actually don't know either. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't ask that. <laughs> I thought you guys would have known. I've seen it like a hundred times, but I, I can't. It's in think the U.S. Of... I'm pretty sure somewhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely in the U.S. Wow, we are idiots. Quail Hollow. Quail Hollow, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So should we know? <laughs> Everybody's yeah, just the chat knows. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. boys. Sorry, what boys. Rob? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's Sorry. Rob saying here? Charlotte. Rob Zombie. Is uh, is that is Chaz okay? Why is he so quiet tonight? I thought he, I thought he effed off. I sent Chaz a picture of his new head cover. There, he just gassed me. So I seem like, maybe he's mad. Yeah, Chaz. What is it? Chaz? You grumpy Chaz? cheese or what? If Chez wants to be mad, let him be mad for a bit. <laughs> you know what? Let's turn the tables, actually. I'm mad at Chez. Yeah, fuck Chez. Fuck Chez. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the wager here? We haven't decided. <laughs> um, hey, you left me on red, Chez. You left me on uh, scene, I guess it is, on Instagram. You left me on scene. Didn't like it, I guess. Didn't like his cover. What's the wager? Five bucks. <laughs> Five bucks. <laughs> okay, but there has to be like a. Okay, there's no wager. I'm t- I'm taking the internationals too. I don't think that they can do it, but there if there was ever a year to do it, I think it's this year. We're dragging on about nothing right now about the. No, no. <laughs> I, I, I want distractions here. Yeah, there is way too many distractions. So let's let's reroute this thing. We got breaking news in regards to um, our contest that we're working on. Do we have uh, a word yet? Drums, you come up with one in the next 30 seconds here. So In 30 seconds? I was going to run it at the end of the 
at the okay. end of the epi. Okay. So for, for people who have been uh, following along here and obviously watched last week's episode, we're doing a contest to celebrate our 100th episode, which is in four episodes from now. Uh, we're working on getting a special guest, one who's been on the show a couple times before. You might know him, uh, Aaron Cockrell. We're going to try to get him on for the 100th show. Uh, he's been a, probably the, no, I wouldn't say the most frequent guest on here, but he's been on here a few times, and um, he's he's a great interview. Um, Not trying to get him on. He's coming on. and He's, he's coming on. Okay. So we can confirm? Confirm. He's coming we on. Can, can, we Buffed can confirm. It. He'll be on the 100th episode of the Kingdom. So that's that's live too. Kingdom not live. No, not live. Not live. <laughs> um, but the other part of that is is we're gonna add. Do you remember how we had the um, Woodstock '99 future guarantee promise? Whether it would happen or not, we didn't know, but it happened. So we can officially announce that we're gonna have the AC head cover set the black maple the maple leaves and the king crown um we're going to give that away as part of the contest for the 100th episode and one of them is going to be signed by aaron cockrell Ooh. so he said pretty- he couldn't he said he couldn't believe anyone would want to sign one but I'm, <laughs> I'm sure there's quite a few people who have followed him over the past few years that would love a signed cover yes because so, then they'll be able to say in 2024 Four no twenty twenty six no twenty twenty four I don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay twenty twenty four Presidents Cup member Aaron Cockrell I would right say. for sure so for the contest the, the winners are going to get uh, the full set so you get a driver fairway fairway signed by Aaron Cockrell himself plus you get uh, the first ever Kingdom hoodie off the press plus you get some Bitcoin. Sponsored by Silverstone Solutions and King Golf, this contest. Um, and to, to win it, you have to have all 12 words starting last episode all the way until basically New Year's or, or a little bit before that. But you're going to have to find the keyword from every episode and you're going to put it into your little private key um, and submit your 12 words. And uh, we'll do a live draw on the podcast for the huge winner. So that's the news. Uh, mom's mom, are we okay? What is the correct spelling of last week's word? <laughs> Rhoda, family yeah. can't win. Family. I thought Dave. she was having a stroke on the keyboard. <laughs> Chaz likes it. So that's that's pretty big news. We're we're pumped to give that away. Um, like I said, it uh it's not gonna be an easy contest to win. It's not one of those contests where you can just tag a buddy and uh <laughs> And uh, everybody's hurting the Jays here, but uh, sorry. I guess I don't know why I'm saying sorry. I'm trying to finish my fucking train of thought here. Uh, Jesus. What was I talking about? <laughs> Look at your hair. There you go. <laughs> You're looking at a troll doll. Wow. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to out. I just saw Ken's comment and then like looked at the screen. And yeah. was... I'm going to have to edit this slightly because I wanted to post uh, the contest. But anyways, so it's not going to be an easy contest to win. You're going to have to work for it, but it'll be worth it, uh, I think, in the end. And and we what we wanted to do is actually reward the people who have been watching the show. So it won't be challenging for guys who have been watching the show and will continue to watch the show. Um, so we, we wanted to look favorite towards uh, our loyal listeners on here and viewers so that's kind of the deal there uh tj says the those were wild head covers yeah we've actually sold a ton i shouldn't say a ton but a ton to us of those those head cover sets so um we're pretty thankful to have aaron um kicking around i guess and and wanting to come on the show and and it'll be it'll be quite the 100 episode so if you have any questions for Aaron, we kind of want to start preparing for this now. Uh, we want it to be a big episode. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Aaron, just send us a message or put it in the chat right now and we'll kind of start keeping track. And uh, no, not live, Rigo? I wouldn't didn't, say, but... Didn't ask him, eh? Well, it'd probably just be better not, but... Yeah. Um, last, we'll week's, last week's show was, uh, what, Jagger or something? 
Caper. We'll tax him on. We'll tax K-A-P-R. Him. Right, there you go. Gapper. You guys hear from Spence Bros yet? Drop them a line. No, we haven't. But um, we're going to be reaching out to some businesses in the next uh, couple months, hopefully for 2023. We're going to try to get a few sponsors on here and just kind of rotate them. Give them a couple other benefits to go along with that. And uh, so we're hoping for some local businesses to maybe, um, I don't know. I, we've always tried to support local businesses on here as much as we could. I think for the first 40 episodes or so, we did some free ads for local businesses. So um, I think once you hit 100, you can you can uh, comfortably ask businesses to see if they want to sponsor the show. Um, so we'll see. Spence Bros will be on the list. Probably uh, Blackweed Brewing Company. Um, maybe Keeler Accounting Company. And we've kind of, uh, since we've been live, we've kind of st- stopped talking a lot of shit that we were talking before. So that's good news for the potential sponsors. Uh-huh. Mulligans and Hackers out on the out on the rock, Newfoundland. Good to see you, fellas. Uh, look at those boys. Where are they there? P-U, I don't know what it says. There you go, Mom. I emailed Spence. <laughs> Just emailed Spence. Okay, so that's the news on the contest. What else we got to cover tonight, fellas? Anything? Oh, we got Manti Teo. Yeah, should we step into it? Let's do it. Okay. Do you remember, like, when this happened? I don't. No? I remember him, but I like, must have missed, like, a whole year of life. Yeah, like, I missed how it ended and i think 98 percent of the world did too by evidence of having to do a documentary of it uh but no i just thought he was like some dud that came up with this and like it says in the documentary everybody kind of thought he was hiding that he was gay and like this was part of that i had no clue how in depth this person went to do this like what a psychopath that's what really blew my mind too is like when you listen to the voicemails of the the voice holy fuck sounds nothing like him or her or whatever you want to call it um and and i don't know how to address them so sorry in advance here she She, um (laughs) she said that she has to go into a dark room to get into character to be able to talk like that did you guys buy that because no I don't think so either. So with that, do you think she would, did it all by herself? That's what I think. I don't think that she did. I don't know. She either. just didn't want to sue her other people. For sure. hundred percent. How do you not get like, can you not charge somebody? Like she I literally think. impersonated another yeah. person, like one girl from their school. That's what I was wondering too, is like, did she get in shit for any of this or just like, whatever. Actually, I don't she, know. She not only didn't get in shit, but she also made probably a shit ton of money off that documentary. And she said at the end that she's happy it happened because it it helps more people like her get out. Like, what? Yeah. How is she the victim of this? Yeah, fuck off with that. She ruined a guy's life and she's going to fucking take sympathy for it? Yeah. Get like lost. I, that actually, I, that left a sour taste in my mouth, that last. For sure. Whatever like, it was. Like, I, I understand, like, you're... Uh, the transition part of that like that's something completely different than what the fuck you did yeah like right. that is fucking psychotic that shit that she pulled made him talk on the phone every day acting like he was keeping her alive that's like, sick what are we doing here you're sick I, yeah mentally sick mentally sick. Can you imagine him like how would you feel if all of a sudden your girlfriend called you on the phone and was like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, it's me. I'm here. I'm alive. And like, what the fuck is going on right now? Well, he's at the national championships. First time UND has been there forever. And this is all happening. Right. You, you have to feel bad for that guy, man. Like the, the entire time I was just like, I feel sick for this dude. The entire world owes that guy an apology. Cause I think 100%, everybody, man. everybody kind of wrote him off and like, it was a media spin, right? Like, as soon as something happened, they just had to spin it and, and no tell way. you what that story was. Yeah, fucking no way. <laughs> But, like, they completely sewered that guy. Like, they didn't go into the other part of it. Like, they just, everybody figured that he was a part of 
the the scheme or whatever it is but holy like, shit why, that poor guy why, like the, i don't know where that would ever come from like what would ever motivate somebody to to do that do you think that he would actually go to that length to get votes for a heisman trophy is it like is that what their theory was on that yeah he i don't know i think it was i think that was people's theory oh my god but like holy fuck and like who was it espn uh, somebody else, they all had their stories wrong and they, they didn't fall, they didn't check any of the Sports facts. Illustrated. Sports right. Illustrated. And I actually really love that dead spin. Like they, they seem like kind of uh weirdos for sure, but I like that their mission for that was not to like screw over Manteo, but to like get ESPN and Sports Illustrated. Yeah. Like that's what they said. They were just trying to sewer the companies. <laughs> yeah. And I love they that. Actually trying to fuck over anybody else. It's pretty yeah, crazy. Then, but then Sports Illustrated ESPN, instead of like apologizing for running this this story that they really had no idea of whether it was true or not, they just completely turned it on its head. Even CNN, that Anderson Cooper, oh man, like my blood was actually boiling at parts of the yeah. show. I'm like, I cannot believe, like they actually destroyed his life. For sure. 100%. Like he should be fucking suing for millions and millions of for dollars. For sure he should. Like for, uh, what is it called? Defamation? Um, yes. Why why hasn't he? Because he's a good guy. Like that was pretty fucking clear in that documentary that he was a pretty decent dude. No kidding. Like, I mean, and sure, he, it's gonna paint him a, a way for the for the for the documentary, but he does seem like a pretty genuine dude. Like, yeah, it was kind of weird that he was in this long distance relationship with somebody that he's never met. Like, there's part of it that is on him. Well, but, the, the guy grew up in an island on Hawaii. and basically right, but you don't think he could have had any woman, like, anywhere around where he was living? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I did, I, that's where the part that I was like, you know what? He grew up in Hawaii. He, you could tell that his dad and family. I and, think there was women on Hawaii that were, like, wow. all over him? But he High was all football. football. Star? He was all football, though, drums. Like, Come that on. was from, from the day he was born until the day he left Hawaii. It was all football. But you don't I think don't there know. was checks getting thrown at him left and right? I don't know. I've never been to Hawaii, and I don't know how small the islands are. Like, he wasn't in, like, Maui or anything like that. But then you go to the States, which is, which is a completely different culture, and, well, like, I don't States. know. Hey? Eh? Well, is Same it really, country. though? Um, but, yeah, like, where he went, like, for sure that'd be a culture shock to him. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, I... I think he was a bit naive in it, but at the same time, like he said, nobody knew what the fuck catfishing was at that point. Right. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, but, I don't know. Plus, you're talking to this girl like every day. Like, I don't know. There, I, I agree with you, drums, in the sense that yeah, he maybe should have known a little bit better. Like, there's parts where you're like, okay, well, I've, you, you've literally never seen her talk in person. Yeah. But even the fact that, that the guy, like before it transitioned to a girl, reached out to the actual girl to get a picture. That's so fucking psycho. Oh like, that's nuts. God. And like was talking to his parents and shit too. And like, brought as, the niece in too. As a, oh my God. You're a fucking lunatic. I don't know. I want to say some things, but I, I probably shouldn't. Uh, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, Maybe just. I think everybody feels it. It's, but then it's a mental illness. Like, there's okay, no but you go on, you like go on and, like it's two, it's two completely different things. Like, you go on and bring light that to gone this through that and not done this psycho shit. Yeah, okay, but you you weird. bring light to everything and, and you bring light to this story, and then at the end, you give it or her, um. You can't say it. Sorry. I thought that's what they said on there. Anyways, I'm not <laughs> saying it to be rude them, whatever it is. Um, like a stage to where it makes it seem like that's okay. That's not okay. Yeah, no, that's completely. Yeah, funny. you're sick. Yeah, you're mixed up, but it doesn't mean you have to wreck someone else's life over it. Yeah. You know, and destroyed that's what destroyed that... his life. Yeah, destroyed it. Oh, man. He was a runner-up for the Heisman, and he didn't even go first round because of it. Like, just ghost him. Don't say you died. And then come oh. back to life still. <laughs> what the fuck? What? 
And then, like Rob said, fucking goes and meets him. <laughs> and hugs him. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he took the girl with him to meet him, hey? Yeah. The daughter or cousin or whatever it was. I don't know. Holy shit. Yeah, I feel so bad for that guy. So bad. Well, there's absolutely there's absolutely no way that that would happen before social media and the internet. There's just you wouldn't meet anybody online, right? Like yeah, like it was a Facebook, and this was like I I can't even remember the year it was 2011, 12 type thing. Can't yeah. remember now. John, Johnny met Johnny football wins the Heisman. Twenty eleven, I think it was. But like before the internet and social media and dating sites, like you literally had to go to the bar to meet a girl, or at the playground, or the the church or the or library school, grocery yeah. store so yeah yeah i mean that's probably why he'd never heard of catfishing before i think it was a fairly new concept it's probably a lot more common now i think there was an the area the kind of the sweet spot there where like nobody really knew that that was a thing yet so a lot of people were getting taken advantage of of course he was on like this huge stage but For i sure. feel like it's a lot less likely now just because so many people are actually aware of what catfishing is and like what fake do you think? accounts have like zero one zero six seven right eight nine right. apps and like yeah but those are like pure bots <laughs> yeah and like what do you think the the like the end goal was supposed to be well i don't know i think they they just started down this path and just like got caught and couldn't get yeah, well, like I, just, you, I do i do get that to an extent but at the same time like like to even start yourself down that path is fucking crazy yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking like FaceTime wasn't a huge thing back then. And I, I know that like the, the, the world we're living in now, especially after these last two years, like the webcam, like Zoom is all pretty normal stuff. And FaceTime. Well, he's, he said okay. that he kept like trying to video chat and stuff and uh, okay. she would be like, no, the camera was broken work, and yeah. whatever. Yeah. I don't know how to work the phone. Like, But also. I, go ahead. Like at the start, like. Okay, you might want to identify as a girl, so you might want to talk to guys. But and then she said that whenever it got serious, she would end it, and that's when she didn't end it. At this, that's when it kind of went sideways. Like off the start, yeah, that's a little messed up, but it's still like okay. Like you pretended to be a, a girl and got caught, then you just ended it. But then when you start bringing in and laying there, like. It was like, elaborate. Like just breathing. Well, she yeah. and your yeah. and your She's and like, your uh, <laughs> like it, it increases when she talks to you. <laughs> what? And oh. like saying that the nurse said that too. Yeah. And the nurse was her. Yeah. Or Everyone what? was her. Or exactly. What? No, I don't like. There had to be more people. I don't think so. I think there was. I think there was, was like. I think it was probably like a backdoor. Let's get rich off this uh, up and coming football star. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? But main takeaway: the guy seems like a good dude. I feel horrible for him, but it seems like he's kind of in a good place now. What a nightmare to live through, man! Holy cow! <sighs> Could you imagine? And even like growing up in Hawaii, that he basically said, like, unless he unless he gets a scholarship, he's not going to school. Pretty wild, pretty wild life. Right. Like you said, his dad made 400 bucks a week. Yeah. MSN Messenger, man, those are a lot simpler days than we got going now. <laughs> but we got good and bad. We got the Kingdom podcast out of it. Uh, he, I mean, let's, he still made $10.5 million in his life. So he probably got paid for this doc too. Yeah. But so out of the 10, what's his take? Five. Right. But I'm, I'm saying like he still made $10.5 million. Yeah, but the what way like he was anybody? touted and the way he played, like he should. And, yeah, have his made reputation. A more the way his that. reputation just got buried. Yeah, but media. It's so yeah. sad that that can happen, eh? Like that the media companies have that much power and influence to be able to do that. I don't think they do anymore, though, which is good news. So, well, I think they have a lot of power. Okay, think. let's get to the Ovi undies and then we got Ovi undies tonight. Well, I thought you said you did. Oh. I thought you posted on Instagram. Oh, nobody, quickly. Nobody because, did? Because oh, this was a golf show, we should point out the fact that the media, I forget who it was. Maybe it was Sports Illustrated. Anyways, their top three most hated athletes of all time 
Number one, Tiger Woods. That's crazy. <laughs> Maybe in like eight, ten years ago he was. 2000. Yeah, wait, and and was. that's fair. That's fair. And the media helped a lot with that too. Right. But Why? it's crazy how, uh, you know, he, he get a dug couple wins. People just forget about how much that they hated him for a while. So poor Tiger too. He's back though. You can you can go back to golf after. You can't really go back to football after a hiatus. But number one, Tiger Woods. Number two, Lance Armstrong, which probably is accurate. I've never met anybody who actually likes Lance Armstrong. And three, Mate, how do you even say it? Mateo. Manti Teo. Manti, Manti, Manti Teo. Manti. Manti. Manti Teo. Uh, what are yeah. rankings? Just remind me you said Lance Armstrong about the how he had. To stick their cancer, and I thought of Phil Castle today. You want to see that picture of Phil Castle today? <laughs> slim. He is slim. Is he? Like, is he still playing? In yeah, Vegas. He by Vegas. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's going to be shredding the table. <laughs> <laughs> Should give a shout out to Big Z, speaking of uh, almost retiring. Big Z. Zena Chara. Yeah. PK, and, too. Uh, and PK. Yeah. Keep it's, the that's that sad, that. PK. Yeah, what happened to him? Yeah, I didn't realize his um, – was it his back? I think it was his back, yeah. I didn't realize it was th that big a deal. But, like, I was listening <laughs> to something today, too, that said he has so much more opportunities outside of playing the game. Yeah, that, like, true. What's he going to go play for 800 grand and, true. like, further fuck up his, his body? Or what is he going to go make like a couple – Like, or something? Yeah, like, he'll be on TV for sure. For sure, because he is like well spoken, and he is like yeah, and he's a clown. Like he's a he's a character. Yeah. He's, he's got a, a big good, personality. Yeah, he's a big personality. Yeah, and as much as it pains you to say, it, like he was sick when he was in Montreal. Like he was like, really, really good, good in Montreal, super good. And then he got traded to Nashville and just Nashville. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. like that team literally fell apart, kind of like at that point, right? Yeah. Nashville also had a really good team, though. Like, he was a three or four D man, I think, when he went to Nashville. Yeah. Because they had yeah. Weber and Ellis and. Uh, no, they traded Weber. Weber for him. Oh, sorry. Well, who's the other guy? The Nashville D man. Suter? No. Uh, yeah. They had wow. at the time, yeah. No. They had Ellis, Suter. <laughs> Suter was already gone. Yossi. Yossi. Uh, Yossi, Ellis. that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah. yeah it was Yossi. Ellis Ekholm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We should find uh, we should find some futures for the NHL and uh, like pool together and put money on them. Mm -hmm. see, yeah. Uh, like bets, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like as a as a podcast. Mm -hmm. Like get uh, get the chat going too. Get Shay Andrew. Chaz, I wonder if Chaz is going to make it to the Iron Man. The Iron Man is in ten days. We started the countdown today on the social media. Uh, I want. I was thinking today. I wonder if people get tired of seeing King Golf stuff online because post something on Instagram, then you go on Twitter and it's on there, and then you go on Facebook, it's on there, and then you have TikTok and it's on there. But you can't miss us. So gotta appreciate it. Uh, the Iron Man. We got the top ten coming in hot. I'm guessing Uncle Dogs will probably be number one. I mean, that's that video is pretty hard to top, but uh, we might shake it up. Who knows? Patty might be number one. Mm -hmm. Patty's is pretty good because it was wardrobe too. Mm -hmm. Right. That one. That was our first video that ever went viral. Um, the Ironman is a it's a scramble tournament that we they usually do it at the first week of October and out of Gilbert. So it's basically like a greenskeeper's revenge. Uh, they got the toughest tee boxes or the longest they can make the holes. And then they put the, the pins in the hardest spots on the green. So if you've seen any of those crazy videos on Instagram or TikTok of the putts running off the green, it was from the Ironman. So um, shaping up to be a big one. It sounds like Chez was on the waiting list. Sounds like he's been bugging Scotto. Uh, but hopefully he can get in. Did you guys see uh, Post Malone fall through the stage? No. St. Louis? Where was this? St. Louis. He was rocking like a, a blues jersey. And I guess it was at their um, arena. And like it looks like it had like a huge open hole. 
that he must have just like got confused of where he was, but like turned or, like was facing the crowd, turned around to walk and just fucking bit it. Broke three ribs. <laughs> So they got him oh, off stage. Dude. They kind of like bandaged him up or whatever. And he came out like 45 minutes later and finished finished his set. It's the true. He would. He's a beauty, eh? Yeah, he looks like a good time. He's he's like one of my favorite. Um, like I don't I don't really care for his music very much, but I like his music too. Do you? Yeah. Trap I just door. really like his attitude. <laughs> Trap door. Trap door. Jesus. Is that real? Yeah, it has to be. Like that's what it looked like. It looked like a trap door, but it just looked like this hole in the middle of the stage, and he just <laughs> trap door. What is this fucking home alone? Yeah. <laughs> Kev just put a trap door there for Posty. <laughs> Kevin McCauley? No, McAllister. McAllister. Macaulay Calkin. A lot of mix there. Um, what else? Any more? Do you see this drums? I had one, but I forget what it is now. Um, ba, 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 ba. okay. I don't know if anybody in the chat or if you guys are uh, big podcast folks from back in the day, but one of the uh, podcasts that really got me like into podcasts besides Joe Rogan was Serial Podcast. The kid. So it was like, Hill? so it was like an investigative um, series about this uh, kid that allegedly killed his girlfriend in high school and basically the whole series went through how he was either innocent or was he guilty and just kind of going through it that way <clears throat> so the consensus after the podcast came out was that he was completely innocent but everybody still had their their uh, questions about it like what the fuck really happened and it never really actually came to like a decision but he's been in jail since 1999 uh, and gone through like numerous appeals, numerous appeals and everything. But I guess last year um, he's in Baltimore. So Maryland, the state uh, put a new law in that anybody who was a minor at the time that had been charged with a major crime and if they've spent over 20 years in jail can request a special appeal. So this special appeal gets requested from uh from his team and then all of a sudden there's this new evidence that's found and he's out within like three weeks of them requesting this so uh this dude's out now and just a big big explosion into the uh podcast world was this serial podcast and so it was just a subject for for podcast listeners that some big news in the podcast world came so out. it was a, a true story yeah yeah true story and the guy's um, out now out of jail he's out of jail yeah what about uh? That's that's interesting. I never got into that, but I I've I know a lot of people that were listening to that podcast. Yeah, it's good. It's like, it like the, Netflix hasn't picked that up or something. Well, uh, HBO did. Oh, did they? They did. Uh, they did like a I think it was maybe three episode thing. Uh, but that's what we listened to when we got to BC for the summer. Right. So we were like super into it recently too. Also, did you see this? The Queen's funeral. 60% of the population of the world watched her funeral. You believe or don't believe? I know one person who did, Dad. <laughs> I find it extremely hard to believe that 60% of the population There's of the world no, no, 60% of funeral. the world probably doesn't even have fucking TV. Right? Yeah, no way. No chance. Absolutely no chance. Uh, and then I got one recommendation is, uh, um, cool. it's a sketch show on YouTube, Jilly and Keeves. It's, uh, Shane Gillis, that comedian that I mentioned a few episodes ago, uh, that was kicked off SNL, got the job and then immediately was removed from the job for some, some podcast wordage that he had out, really? uh, but he's got a sketch show and they're only like six minute episodes, but they're fucking amazing. Like the best sketches you've ever seen. Like he's got an only fans, dad, Trump speed dating. Like they're, they're amazing. So What's definitely check. it's a uh, Jilly G I L L Y and Keeves K E E V E S. I, I need like, uh, it just caught my attention. You said there's six minutes. Like I have such a small attention span. 
Yeah. That I they're, can't watch. I can't they're so like good. Half hour. And then, oh, the other one is, uh, he's got Isis t- Toyota. Like, the guy's last name is Isis. <laughs> <laughs> and he's trying to figure out how to, like, advertise. <laughs> and then the last one is a uh, new show we're going to start uh, this weekend called The Patient. Steve Carell's new show. Uh, it is a thriller. He plays a therapist who is kidnapped by a serial killer who is trying to figure out why he's so fucked up. So that's one to check out, apparently. What are we going to watch for uh, the next Next Kingdom uh, Netflix Club? Do we have any suggestions in the chat? Or do you guys have anything you want to watch? I've been on a tear lately. I've watched the most documentaries I've ever watched in the last three years. I watched the Woodstock one and the Mante Teo. Have you seen that uh, Marty Fish one? The chess player? No, tennis. Bobby Fish. Yes. Do you have Bobby Fish is the, the chess guy. Yeah. You've seen Marty Fish? Yeah. Okay. From Carberry? <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to watch it again, though. We can do that one. Yeah, I think we it's... talked about it on here. Oh, maybe. That There's some good uh, documentaries that look like for the same people who did the Manti Teo one. That's, what, that's Marty Fish, yeah. That's part of, yeah. Oh, is it? And there was like the Malice in the Palace one, yeah. too. Yeah, let's watch that one. And then Should there we... was the And One one as well. Like, oh, yeah. Too. Did you? Yeah. Did you? Is it good? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it's good. I just don't know, like, we'd have as many, like, talking points as. Yeah. Well, we don't have to do one every week because I won't be able to watch. I mean, th- not that I don't have time. I just don't really have the interest to do it. But we'll maybe come up with one. and Or do you want to make one now? I don't know. Like, how do you want to do this? Drums, did you read that uh, oh, Joel, Damon, Joel Damon article? Hey, Did you read that Joel Damon ar- article? Uh, yeah. You did? Sorry, I missed so Ches. Uh, Ches asked if we had five hoodies kicking around. Ches, uh, message me. We can figure something out. You needed them in Swan River by Friday? What is it today, Wednesday? Yeah, that's not happening. Call up uh, Derek Burnside, Pure Later. No. Oh, awesome. what we should watch is the um, from the same series, the the ref that was betting on games and shit. Yes, yes, I yeah, heard it's cool. unreal. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Like, I heard it's incredible. What's it called, Rob? Rob, what's that one called? Oh yeah, Chaz, that might be tough, buddy. I don't know if if I could even mail them by then. Anyways. Nice to me. We can figure something out. I'll give all my five King Golf hoodies that I have. You skip have? it. Like, I have five. Rob says skip it. Bad recommendation, boys. Huh. Foxy, no. Anyway. I heard it's pretty crazy, but... <laughs> uh, I listened to a podcast about that, too. Hey, what's the word tonight? Sobies. Sobies. Spelt normally? Yeah. This is going to be a wild private key for those who watch. I'm going to post something. uh, I'm going to be posting Uh, something on Instagram and Facebook probably next week. I wanted to give the listeners a chance to be the first to hear about the Aaron Cockrell announcement. Uh, Just to give you guys kind of a head start on everybody. Because I think if we get a little further down the road, it'll be harder for people to catch up. So, like I said, we wanted to favor our uh, loyal listeners and give them a good chance of winning this. So, um, here we go. Uh, we'll post the private key. You'll have to have the 12 words ready to go. Man, uh, is it just me or is there like a million flies in the world this year? Am I the only one not frozen right now? I'm not frozen. You might be the only one that is frozen. We're unraveling at the end here. Mm-hmm. We've got to wrap this up. Oh, there's a swan iron flies, man. No way. Flies were way worse this year. Than, actually, worse than mosquitoes. Um, do you guys? And yeah, they actually bite. were. And mosquitoes were bad. But do you guys, why are you so blurry, drums? Do you guys remember when I used to have um, that segment called George? Oh, you've been frozen for fucking five minutes here. George Drunk Jor? Remember that? Yes, Trev. Yeah. 
<laughs> Final answer. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Remember when I had that? <laughs> yeah. What's going on? Uh, I came up with a new invention. Here. I, okay. You have on a new that, invention. Quickly on that note, though, we need another laugh attack from Rigo soon. We have two already on YouTube. We need the two, 2022 edition one. So might have to get him on the pen here sometime soon. <laughs> um, but my invention idea was, uh, so, you know, you know, when you hit a fly with a fly swatter and then it just goes into like fucking outer space or something or just me, like it, it seems like it hits it. It flings off it because it's like a kind of whippy and then you just can't find the fly. So my invention is like a Venus fly trap where you hit the fly and then it just like traps it without it flinging into oblivion. Huh. I've, I've also seen them just drop dead. If, you, if they, if they don't stick to the thing, like if they don't stick to it, they're, they're gone. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. I've had a lot of things that just ha only happened to me, it seems like. so. Or you're like completely neurotic psycho. <laughs> why because i lose flies after i hit them or like you uh, you notice shit maybe it could just be because my kitchen's kind of darker too and um maybe that maybe that has something to do with it i don't know that's why i like bringing these points up to see if uh it's a me problem or an everybody problem yeah, I I, <laughs> I do want to try one of those salt guns. It looks impossible to hit those little pricks. <laughs> okay, explain. Well, it just shoots a like it's like a super soaker, but it shoots salt and it's to kill flies. But I don't know how the fuck you hit a fly with it. Is it like a fire hose? Because there's no way you're hitting a fly with like a little wee stream. No, it's like a little super a super soaker. It just it's like salty water, and then you have to clean it up after. Yeah. That's gross. But at least they would. Have you ever uh, used like the electric ones, like the buzz zappers? No. Yeah. We have, we have those at the lake. I'm pretty good. Usually end I up also, just touching my finger on it to see how much. Yeah, I, I licked one one time. <laughs> those tennis rockets? Remember those? Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's, a drum yeah, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> what an invention, man. Whoever came up with that is sitting on an island right now and it was just a bullshit invention too but everybody bought them oh dry salt okay i'm gonna have to youtube this another so day. is it just like a salt ball or something that they shoot or is it just pure, pure like granular salt i don't get it okay we're gonna look this up right now because we won't remember next week play it play it on here there's a it's video for it. salt, the original salt gun it's on Amazon. It looks like a Nerf gun, actually. Uh, videos. This so podcast wild. has gone off the rails tonight. In the last 13 minutes. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is happening in here. Yeah, okay, but that's every episode of The Kingdom. We usually have like an hour where we kind of keep on track, but not tonight. But that's okay. Uh, Sorry, boys. I don't know if I can share this or not. Do we need to? I don't know. Oh. This simple trick will save you thousands on fuel costs. Keep watching to see how. This ex programmer got fired from his job at a German car manufacturer. Okay, here we go. Here we go, folks. Bug in the fuel management. <laughs> Derek Burnside. Oh, flies. Ah. Hey, the Cox. Thanks for joining us around the home. Okay, flies, they suck, right? Especially when you're hanging out, close to the grill, <laughs> trying to work. And there's Can you flies hear? Everywhere. They want to get around the food. Oh, yeah. They want to get rid of all of them, right? All of them. And I don't want like a stupid little fly swatter. Oh, right. You want a bug assault gun. Look at this uh, shit. I've seen these out there. You've probably seen these advertised. Maybe you're thinking, okay, is that thing just a gimmick? Is it stupid? Does it actually work? Is it lame? All right, so let's answer those questions right away. <laughs> uh, let's first by saying which one this is. The bug assault. 3.0, okay? So it's obviously not the original gun. Um, I will see have Amazon links in the description down below. Okay? So you guys can get the same one I'm using here. Not only that, uh, but it helps support the channel because we're Amazon affiliate. so click away. How many views this motherfucker got? Oops. Oh, this one's already ready to go. 
Hundred thousand. What? <laughs> There's another one on the grill. Now some of you are gonna be Clean like, them up. Well, how powerful is this thing? Does it does it hurt? Well, let's take a look here. Some leaves. Okay, that didn't even stay on. Let's try to keep one that stays on. Okay, it just it tears it right up, and it does sting if you get yourself shot, and if you get a ricochet shot, like if you're shooting off the ground and it shoots up and hits people's shins, it, it's a uh, it's just not it's not comfortable. It's and it was powerful shins. enough. I got this little uh, painted window house thing over here. There's the old old wind window, uh, and it did take the paint off of that. So if you have what? surfaces with weak paint, um, and if you don't care about it, then that's cool. But it, it will actually you know strip some of the paint off too as well. Almost like a sandblaster. Uh, so if you guys are wondering, <laughs> yes, it obviously it kills flies like crazy. You know, wasps and stuff like that. <sighs> You're generally just going to piss them off. Um, hopefully you only got one wasp around and you can get some good shots on it. They, they move around a lot. It's really hard to get them. Uh, I try it. Um, you can sometimes get them to the under the ground and, and keep going. Uh, but for flies, you know, standard your standard house flies, especially out here at the grill, this is amazing. It's fun. Oh, it thing. works. You will just take out an entire colony of flies. Um, so entire I would say colony. That this was an amazing invention. I'm gonna say it wasn't an amazing invention. <laughs> like I think that's fake. No man. This is a good idea, Rob. Remember when we shot you with a BB gun? Me? Yeah. In the butt, bare butt. Let's yeah, wrap this up. That's a good idea, though. Do you think we could order that from Amazon? Expensive for the kingdom? Expensive? How much is it? I don't know. We'll look into it for next time. I'll write it down. Sold. Let's wrap this shit up, boys. Sold. All right. Let's get this 60, half out of here. Sixty-four dollars. No way. What? Does it actually kill the fly? You think, or just like get some? Oh, okay. It just stuns them. How they can order this? A gun. <laughs> No. Zapper, yeah. Okay, we're we're running overtime here, boys. YouTube's gonna kick us off here right away. Uh thanks everybody in the chat tonight. That was a good way to end, actually. Had some laughs. Um appreciate everybody coming on here, chiming in. Uh we don't so we don't have a Netflix book club for the next episode? No way. No. Okay. No, everybody watch uh everybody just watch those Jillian Keeves skits. Where do you watch them? YouTube. YouTube. Jilly, G-I-L-L-Y, and Keebs, as in Keebs Golf? Uh, with a V, not a B. Keebs. Okay. Take us out of your drummy. Okay, that's it. Let's wrap it up for this week. Uh, again, the keyword for this week was Sobies. Write it down. Keep it locked in. If you want to need it. Good-ass prizes. But we're out of here for this week, everybody. Enjoy the President's Cup. We will see you next week. We'll see you later. Peace out, boys. Love you. Later. Love you, fellas. Peace.